Is it the 91st chapter or division? Uh, division, sorry. Okay, thank you. Good evening. My name is Kiana Wilson, and I will be your moderator for this class. Please make sure that your video is off and your mics are muted. Welcome to another lecture given by members of the Chicago Northside Zoom class. This is a school and not a church. This school is a nonprofit, non-denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh, our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, and the state of Ohio, in the year 1931. The Dean of the Chicago Northside School is Dr. John Quaites and the president is Dr. Kenyatta Jackson. In this school, we use the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted by Lord. The true title of the Word or Son is Elohim. It has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. It has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means Elohim is the title that the creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in a good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English language until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, such names as Jesus and Jehovah are impossible renderings of the true and original name of our father and his son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in this state, he is incomprehensible. 
and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape and form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart to show you that everything on this chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing that man could not perceive of him in this pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word of son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form could only be seen in divine visions and understood in divine revelations. Later on, this self-same spirit manifested himself in the physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now, there's only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is, what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? A further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface of the Holy Name Bible. Also at this school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. It's called the divine pattern because it's Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern and that nothing Absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. The objectives and aims of the Chicago Northside Zoom class are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Two, second, is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religions, psychology, philosophy, and modern, practical, excuse me, and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and Avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known 
that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name um, given among men whereby man can be saved, must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Tenth, to inherit eternal life. Now, in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state, our watchword is peace. Our slogan is speak the truth. Tonight, class will be dedicated in prayer by Dr. Myra Quates. And the scripture lesson will be read by Dr. Rose Taylor, which is Psalms, the 91st Division. Also, uh, Okay, can we have our can we have our prayer? Can we all bow our hearts and minds? Heavenly Father Yahweh, we'd like to thank you in the name of our Savior King, Yahshua the Messiah, for allowing us to know you and to understand your purpose and to hold on to those things which you have given us with a clean heart and a pure mind so that we're not distracted and dragged away from this most precious awesome gift that you have given unto the sons that you have chosen before the foundation of the world in our precious savior's name thank you so much Yahshua and with that I'm going to say hallelujah Thank you. Now, may we please have our scripture lesson. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'll be reading from the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testament, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts, revived, revised by A.B. Training, the Scripture Research Association, reprinted by Yahshua Promotions. This is Psalms, the 91st Division. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress. My El in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth by day, nor the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made Yahweh, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under foot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I, deli therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he knoweth, he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. That was Psalms, the 91st Division. Thank you, Dr. Quates, for the prayer, and thank you, Dr. Taylor, for reading the scripture lesson.
Uh, if anyone is moved to scripture read tonight, please type it in the chat. We thank you for in advance. Uh, let's see here. We would like to thank, let me see if we have any visitors. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Um, the, we will have a three speaker format tonight. And the first speaker will be myself. Let me see. Yes, yeah, says me. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I am. I'm thankful to be here, and I'm thankful to know something, to be shown something, for an assurity about my Creator and about how my creator operates and to know that it's the Holy Spirit that's the one that's doing the teaching. Um, I'm thankful for that. <laughs> um, hopefully, if it be his will to use me as a speaker, um, you know, all honor and glory will be given to the one who deserves it, which is the one who is in control of it all. <laughs> um, The scripture lesson, <clears throat> excuse me, was Psalms the 91st division. And what stood out to me was about how his truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Um, do we can do we have someone to read maybe uh, starting at one, Psalms 91? From one to four. Okay, this is Psalms 91 and one, one through four. Mm -hmm. okay. Psalms 91 and one. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my Elohim, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thank you, uh, Dr. Taylor. That um, I would say of Yahweh, he is my refuge and my fortress, my El and him will I trust. The only way that you have trust is for it to be proven to you. And that is what the Holy Spirit can do by the preaching of the gospel, can prove it to you and will show you by um, the things that are made. Uh, one of the tenets of this school is Romans 1 and 19. Can we get that, please? And can we also get, without a prophetic vision, that people perish? Um, and then, and, and here in the 91st Division, um, talking about trust, and then surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. Uh, it goes on to say, he shall cover thee with his feathers. You maybe think about standing in that most holy place. Like when you, when he's, when he's get built up your faith, and you can you trusting in him, you standing in the most holy place. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and thy buckler. And if we could get that last, the, the third one is um, he wants for us to worship him in spirit and in truth. And this is this is a school. And in this school, one of the aims is for to help. The first aim is to help you find and know Yahweh as he really is and as he actually exists. That, to, to know him as he really is and as he actually exists, is not something that you you guessing at. To know that he is operating according to a specific 
pattern and plan. Can we read uh, Romans 1 and 19? This is Romans 1, 19, 1, 19 and 20. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them. And what one not. thing, the, that which may be known of Yahweh. So it lets you know, there's something that can be known of him. It's manifested. I'm listening. I'm sorry, excuse me for interrupting you. But just to point that out, it's those it's those little things that once upon a time before I had come to this school, uh, things that I read over, uh, things that, you know, hadn't been highlighted to me. I hadn't been encouraged to, well, let's, let's, let's keep on. Romans 1 19. Okay, Romans 1 19 and 20. Because that which may be known of Yahweh is manifest in them, for Yahweh have showed it unto them. He's going to show it unto them. He's, he's the one that's doing the showing, showing it unto them. Mm -hmm. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and supernal nature, so that they are without excuse. He's gonna show us something about who he is, how he's operating, and he and look, we're not gonna we are without excuse. <laughs> without excuse. And he's gonna show us by the things that are made. And what are we looking at by the things that are made, how he operates? And one of the things that we come into knowing this, and we're gonna get to that, that he's operating, we see a pattern of a death, burial, resurrection. We're looking at what he has made. That scripture lets us talking about what he has made. He gave uh, the tabernacle for us to look at. He gave us some things for us to look at to see how he's operating, how he's operating according to a death, burial, and a resurrection. Uh, what was that? What was that second scripture? Without a prophetic vision. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. No, no, no. It's without a prophetic vision. The people yeah. care. Mm -hmm. Proverbs twenty nine and eighteen. Mm -hmm. Well, this is the King James, but I can get the holy name in a minute. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. And then I can get the holy name Bible version. I think is what is it? The, the holy name Bible, you were looking for the how it reads in there for without a prophetic vision. Mm -hmm. I, I got it too. What is it? What's the scripture again? 29 and 18 Proverbs. Unless you get that before I do. <laughs> okay. Proverbs 29 okay. and 8, 29, 18. Mm -hmm. Where there is no prophetic vision, the people perish. But mm. he keepeth the law. Happy is he. Okay. So without a prophetic vision, the people perish without a prophetic vision. We will all be trying to keep that law. <clears throat> so happy is he. <laughs> we all be trying to keep a law that wasn't given to us, just operating without understanding. And before coming into the school and being encouraged, first of all, before the, the, the this school is the result of a divine vision and revelation. And like the scripture said, without a prophetic vision, the people perish. The founder of this school had this divine vision and revelation. And he said, to make me prove it to you satisfied. And ever since I've come into this school, it's just been a consistent proving it, proving how I, Yahweh is operating. And, and then the beautiful thing about it is the Holy Spirit proves how that he is operating according to... Uh, According to this pattern that was highlighted in this divine vision and revelation that, that the founder had, he said, I didn't come to say anything different than what Moses had to say or anything different than what John on the Isle of Patmos had to say. He said, if I was coming to say something, and I'm paraphrasing, if I was coming to say something different, then I would be wrong. He said that Yahweh gave him a, a understanding of what was written 
he gave him an understanding of, of the vision, a divine, he had a divine vision of revelation. And he said, made me prove it. And there's nowhere in the world that I have heard anybody say, made me prove it. Or may or said, don't believe it just because I said it. Uh, who incur who who would be insulted if you just believe me because I said it? And that's not what we want to do anyway. If you just believe, and you know, I was thinking about earlier today when you just believe something because somebody said it. I was thinking about how, and off topic for a quick second, how people got perms for so long, and now it's hard for the hair to grow back right there. It's thin. It, it's causing cancer. I thought about how, um, you know, we use baby powder. <laughs> when I was a little girl, and this sent my mother where I was walking through a cloud, and then you come to find out years later, this is something that caused cancer. But this is something, these were habits and things that were, just from a natural standpoint that was given to me that I kept on doing. You know, a lot of us can do stuff in, in just ignorance. That's why the scripture said, you know, a lot of us getting back to this, to what we're talking about here, what we're here for is to find and know Yahweh as he really is and actually exists and to worship him in the spirit and the truth and not according to, you know, what we think it is. Having a zeal for him, but not with it, without a knowledge and an understanding of how he operates, how he wants to be worshipped. And that's one of the, the things, I mean, that's what I'm most grateful for of coming to sit down here and study is to, is to like you read in Revelation, I believe it's in Revelation where you say, lo, I stand at the door and not, uh, I want to get that one too, because I always mess that up, but I love that. He said, I stand at the door and not, he say, if, if you open, I come in and I'll sup with you. He's the one that's teaching all things. And he's the one that's giving the, the the divine vision and revelation. As we pick up this book, we come to find out. I didn't know that. First of all, the book is broke broken down into three sections. You got the law, you got the prophets, and the fulfillment. Um, and throughout it. The scriptures are written of him. It's all about him and how he operates. I didn't know like these important things to look at, to know that, you know, there's a time and place for everything, that he has his own timetable, that he has his purpose. We'll get that too. Let me get the scriptures that we have right quick and then we'll move along, if you will. Well, I have Revelation 3 and 20, if you want that. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'll take it. Okay. Revelation 3 and 20. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. Right. He's the one that's giving the vision. And where is he knocking at? He's not knocking on the church door. Because I is oh, <laughs> he's knocking on the door of our heart and mind. And we can see that when we know something about this tabernacle pattern that he told as in the moderation say that he told Moses to build, he told Moses to come up the top of Mount Sinai. This tabernacle pattern is a pattern that I had never heard about before. And why would I have not heard about this before when I was in the church? Uh, uh, many, 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 many years. And I had never heard anything about that his name is Yahweh. I didn't know he had a name. I didn't know that when I heard growing up in the Catholic school, Father, Son, and the name of the Father, and then the Son, and then the Holy Spirit, I had never even thought to say, what is his name? I never thought that uh, he had nothing about that Lord and God are titles, ever. Uh, I never thought anything about that that the name Jesus was impossible for the Savior's name to be Jesus. And I'll tell you, I believe that my soul salvation had to do with knowing something about my creator. I knew that it was something about the Bible. I knew it was something about these stories, but you know, I had a zeal, but it was not according to knowledge. And, and the point of just bringing up about the things that were handed down to me, like, you know, sometimes you don't know something that's given to you is not the truth. And the reason why, like in the scripture lesson, when it's, when it, you know, I enjoy reading uh, the scripture lesson is because it's talking about, you know, 
It's the truth. That's what they're saying. The truth to set you free. It's about knowing what the truth is. And you know it's important because if you, even when I was in church, <laughs> if you do any reading, you know that it was by, it was a lie that if you go back to the garden, it was a lie that he believed that she would be like the most high if she, uh, that's what the devil told her. That's the thing we got to know. There's a truth and a lie that's going on. He told her if you, uh, that you will be like him. And she was disobedient. She went on about to do it the way that she saw fit or the way that somebody told her instead of being obedient to what they'll say of Yahweh. And 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 that's important. We going back. We looking back. That's why I say this book is is broken down into three parts: the law, of prophet, and the fulfillment. First of all, Yahshua the Messiah, which is his name, he told us to look back. He said, "You search the scriptures, and you think I'm saying you think they're about you. I mean, we gonna need to get that one too. Let's let's hold that one. I'm gonna stop right there. You search the scriptures, but can we can we? What else do we have? We're holding on for? I believe we're holding on to John 4, 24. And okay. So you, John uh, 5 and 39, search your scripture. What, what do we have before that? But if that's 20, what you have. John 4 and 24. Okay. Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. There you go. It's it's a it's a must right there. Must worship him in spirit and the truth. So what is the truth? What is the truth? Um, even back before the garden, there was a war in heaven, and Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. Who? What was they talking about? What was that all about? The adversary was back there. Telling his lies, which drew by his lie, by the tale that he told, a third of the angels were were drawn out of heaven by that lie that he told. So it's important for us to not just worship any kind of way we think or any kind of way that was given to us. And we down, we can see, we can see all the darkness and chaos and confusion out here. It's time to get down to the bottom line. It's time to get down to it. It's not about you having a zeal or it's not about that. It's it, this has to be according to knowledge. Because the knowledge and the and the understanding is what it's gonna save our soul. That's what that's why we're here. We're here to sit down and not just believe somebody because they say something or because it sound good or because they look good. <laughs> you know, we down here to, to to be about our father's business and to understand how he wants to be worshipped. And it's in spirit and the truth. So when you get down to the truth of the matter, it's impossible for his name to have been Jesus or it's in, and it's impossible for his name to be Jehovah Jesus, however you want to call it. <laughs> but the thing is, when I said that, the, that J, even, even in the Latin language, there's no sound that produces the sound that makes that letter J. Hebrew, Greek, or Latin. What we got right here is this name chart. Um, what you see at the top of it, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. And underneath it, you know, it's important for us to know that the true name of the Father is Yahweh. And it's important for us to know that it's been substituted in most of the Bibles that you go pick up. You're going to see that there's a substitution of Lord and uh, uh, in it. And that's erroneous. We got to worship him in spirit and the truth. So if we're not supposed to be calling him by Lord, what are we supposed to be calling him by? His name is Yahweh. And he told Moses... That, and since we, and I'm saying, everybody, <laughs> the story of Moses, every, hold on a second. Sorry about that. Hold on one second. Okay. Um, we got to know what his name is. We're looking at this name chart uh, where, and then you see Elohim. That's the title he gave to himself. The, the That erroneous substitution for for Elohim, who's really the word, who's the son, 
uh, is God. You know, that's been replaced. And then the, the title of our father, I mean, the title of uh, our, not the title, the name of our, of the Messiah, of the true, the true name is, is Yahshua. And if we look at, um, I, I, I'm kind of, I want to get to Acts before the fourth chapter, because I love that chapter. I love that. That's one of the things that has hooked me even um, stronger into loving, studying at this school is some of these things are right there for us to read. Right there. It's just... It's mind blowing, and that's what we want to know. We want to know what the truth is, so we don't find ourselves at the end of this. We got it wrong. We don't want it to be where we find ourselves where he say, "I don't know you. I never knew you." You know, is that's why it's, it's vitally important to not go about it the way we think. It's the way he shows it to us, not about how we feel like we wanted to do it. It's about the truth. One hundred percent is about the truth. So if you know that his name is, it's impossible for his name to be Jesus. Because what was the name of, what was his name during the time he walked the earth plane? If it was impossible for him to be, for, for him to be called Jesus or Jehovah, there was no sound that produces, uh, it, there was no letter that produced that sound. And though in Greek, Hebrew or Latin, then what was his name when he walked? when he walked the earth plane and I'm just looking at it like it's you, we, we got to know the truth. We don't want to just say, Oh, but he knows who I'm talking about. If you know who you're talking about, you won't want to mess that up. If you know who you're talking about, that's like, if I'm trying to get my, my child's attention, I'm going to call my child by name. And if my child had to identify who I am, the, the child is going to call me by my name. And even Yahshua the Messiah say, I come in my father's name and you receive me not. Then he said, let another come in his own name and him you will receive. And guess what? The whole world has received Jesus. And you can go do a minor investigation and see that it was impossible that for his name to be that. And then matter, as a matter of fact, that his name actually is Yahweh. And 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 the one who died and on, on the cross for us is Yahshua. So... You know, do we have anything else holding? John 5, 39. Okay, I'll take that too. This is John 5 and 39. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Who is that speaking? Yahshua. That was Yahshua the Messiah saying it. <laughs> he said, search the scriptures. So what are the scriptures? The scriptures are the law and the prophet. So you, the law is the first five books of the Bible. Um, and before I forget, I was thinking about how he said, uh, um, can we get that scripture where, I think it's in somewhere where you're reading, where he goes to tell them, I will not accuse you to the father. There's one that will accuse you. Because in, in that day, in the time when Yahshua the Messiah was, walking the earth plane and he was telling those religious leaders of that day, you know, search the scriptures. They were supposed to know it all. They were supposed to be the ones that were leading the people. I think about even now, if you know it all, why why the, the religious leaders of this day, if you you know so much, why are you not calling him by his name? You know, it's the same thing repeating itself. But um he was telling them, you know, they supposed they were supposed to know the law. They was the ones that was that, that was given the law. It was the original, it was the Hebrews that was given that law. Matter of fact, you know, the religious leaders of this day will still try to have us trying to live un underneath that law, like the Messiah didn't come and fulfill all that was written in the law and the prophets. They would keep us in that bondage if they could. It's, it's just the same thing that was going on when Yahshua the Messiah was walking the earth plane and they crucified him. They crucified him. And they were consistently, the religious leaders said that they were looking for ways to try to trip him up. They, you know, it's, they crucified him. And they saw all the miracles that he was doing. 
and he gave all the all the honor and the glory to his father. He he said, "I come to do my father's business." He was giving them. He was giving the father all the honor and the glory, and and he was telling them, "Can we get that scripture about?" He said, "It was one that accused you, one that you love." Okay, this is John five and forty. I'll start 44. I'll start at 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor which cometh from Yahweh only? One second. Look, look. <laughs> he said, how? How? How could you receive the honor that's coming one from another? Look, any type of thing, that, any knowledge, any understanding that you get when you come sit down here, it's, it doesn't if if it is somebody that's looking to be honored, that's wrong. No, it, it shouldn't be anybody around here looking to be honored. We're looking, we're honoring the Father because the Father has given us some information about him that we can verify, we can prove. He he's preaching his own gospel. He's the one that's giving the knowledge. He's the one that's doing the teaching. <laughs> can you read that again for me, please? Can you go back? Yes. John 5, 44. How can ye believe which receive honor one of another? Right. We're seek, not looking for honor one and from one of another. Keep going. And seek not the honor which cometh from Yahweh only. That's the thing. That's what we're looking for. The, it, 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 the knowledge is that the knowledge is coming from Yahweh only. But the, like the religious leaders of that time. That wanted him to be crucified so badly that were his own people <laughs> he was coming to to try to tell them, to try to teach him something. We don't want to be like that. You know, we don't want to be like that. We want to look for him to teach us, and there's a way that he's gonna teach us. He's gonna like we read that this the reader read that about I come to the door and not he coming to the door. What's what what door? The door to what? And we'll end up getting there too. You know, it's it's we're we're walking around. This is a tabernacle that we're walking around with. He's coming to knock on our heart and mind to teach us something, to tell us something how he wants to be worshipped. You can't hold on to all of that that we once thought that we thought we had right, and we obviously didn't because we weren't even respecting it. We didn't have no respect on his name. We didn't even know that it was, we, I didn't know that he had a name. But as he begins to reveal these things to us and give us this knowledge, we're responsible for that. And our soul salvation, salvation is dependent upon that. Um, would you, can you finish Rose? I'm sorry about that. Okay, this is the 45th verse. Do not think I will accuse you to the Father. There's one that accuseth you, even Moses, and whom ye trust. You trust. Look, the Moses, and whom ye trust. Keep going. For had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. Mm. For he wrote of me. Hmm. But if you believe not his writings, how shall ye believe my words? If you didn't believe his writings, that's why he said, look, search the scriptures. You can read that for yourself. Search the scriptures. They written about him. But he said, you know, if you didn't believe what Moses said, you're not going to believe what I'm telling you. And I'm thankful, you know, like the scripture without a prophetic. I did see the five minutes. Sorry about that. Without a prophetic vision, the people perish. We got to do what he said. He told us to look back. He said, he said, it's Moses that accused you to the father. But he said Moses wrote of him. And when we go back and we look, uh, can we please get, do we have anything else? If not, let's go to Exodus 12 chapter. Uh, when he gave his name to you Moses in the burning bush. Exodus um, 3 and 1 you want? Oh, you can start at one, please. Oh, I can go to 15. It's up to you. I'm going to start at one and we'll jump. Okay, this is Exodus 3 and 1. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro Riel, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, 
and, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of Kimon, even to Horeb. And the angel of Yahweh appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he okay. looked. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I interrupted you a little bit too soon. He appeared to him. He appeared to him in the flame of in the, in the flame of fire out of the bush. He was having a vision. Let's keep going a little bit more. Look and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Okay, so we see we see Moses is standing there. He's having a vision. Without a prophetic vision, the people perish. So he's looking at this. He's looking at this bush and this, and he sees it as a flame of fire. And it was burning, but it wasn't being consumed. Okay, let's keep on a little bit more. All right, and Moses said, "I will now turn aside." and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when Yahweh saw that he turned aside to see, Yahweh called unto him out of the midst of the fire. I mean, mm, I he, called, he called to him. <laughs> That's why I'm like, he's standing at the door knocking. Look, he going to give you, you, what I hope is, is for us to have a divine vision and revelation. It's him the one that's going to do all the proving. He's the one that's doing the appearing to your heart of man. Okay, we keep going. And said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. And he said, draw not nigh and hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thy, thou standest is holy ground. He had to take off his shoes. He bearing his soul. He's standing on holy ground. And he having a vision. Okay. Moreover, he said, I am uh, the Elohim of thy father, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, but he was afraid to look upon Yahweh. Mm -hmm. And Yahweh said, I have surely seen the in which are in Egypt. Mm -hmm. But I know their sorrow. And I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptian. He and so we're gonna jump down. He appeared to Yahweh. I mean, see, Yahweh appeared to Moses. He and he he's saying, "I've seen the affliction." He the same then as he is now. He said, "I've seen that affliction." Uh, like the scripture lesson was talking about, like he is my refuge. Um, I kind of want to get that before I want to go back to that before we uh, after this one. Oh, uh, okay. I'm listening. You want me to jump over to 15 before? Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Verse 15. And Yahweh said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob, have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Now look, he gave Moses a vision. And in that vision, he told him, this is my name forever. That's what we want to hear. We want to have that vision. This is my name forever. Because I sure didn't know his name was Joshua. I sure didn't know nothing but about my sweet Jesus and didn't even know that that, that letter J wasn't even in the Hebrew, Greek, or Latin. So uh, my time is up. But I just want to encourage Everybody just to keep on looking to him. To, to He's the revealer of secrets. Um, and he's doing all the teaching. With that, if anything was gained, all honor and praise go to Yahweh Elohim through Yahshua the Messiah. All honor and glory. Hallelujah. Okay. So now we're going to go on to our second speaker. Let's see. Our second speaker for this evening will be Dr. Mariah Coleman. Dr. Coleman.
Can everybody hear me clearly? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you. She says, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm so sorry. Okay, I see uh, Dr. Coleman. Okay. For our next speaker, I'd like, it's an honor to call Dr. Amir Coleman. Um, hello. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, good evening. I um enjoyed the remarks that came through the previous speaker, um, and uh, if anything as well is gained or said that is. Um, either pricked your conscience or your heart. Uh, all praise and honor and glory goes on to Yahshua, the Messiah. Uh, I don't think I'll be up here long, um, but just uh, in continuing where the previous speaker um, left off, what scripture was that that she uh, got last, uh, Dr. Taylor? Okay, I'm sorry. What was that, Dr. Coleman? The scripture that uh, Dr. Uh, Wilson got. What was the last one she was reading? Uh, the last one, John 5.39 and 5.42. Okay, John 5.39. All right. Um, before you get John 5.39, can you get... Uh, can you get um, Matthew 24... 13 or verse 14 beginning with this gospel and then after that uh can you get uh john 17 and 3 and then first corinthians 15 1 through 4 okay this is matthew 24 and 13 <clears throat> But he's, <clears throat> this is Matthew 24, 13, but he shall in, he that shall in. Can, can you read, I'm sorry, uh, read the verse above. Verse above, Matthew 24 and 12. And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Mm -hmm. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, what the previous speaker was going through or covering was different uh, aspects of this teaching. Um, this is a school, as uh, a moderator says, it's not a church. And in this school, it's a school of research. And what we do is we learn, um, uh, study upon different religions, and we do research in, in uh, pretty much everything that there is in this universe uh, that can be known. Uh, and we prove by the things that are created, the creation, uh, to prove the existence of the creator and that he has a name and that his name is Yahweh and that Yahweh has a purpose. He has a pattern and a plan, which is salvation. So now it is by this gospel, which is the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. We're going to get that in first Corinthians 15, one through four, that is going to be preached for a witness. Now a witness is that which either uh, is accepted or uh, rejected. Uh, nonetheless, it's a witness. Um, and this gospel being in, in principle, the, when the gospel is being preached, the blood, blood being placed on your head, just like it was with the people down back in the uh, times of Noah, when he was sent out to preach after he received a vision from Yahweh 
of that ark and of that flood and told to warn the wicked. So now in self-same principle, we're down here preaching the gospel, which we're going to get um, of Yahshua the Messiah, warning. As we say that it's a witness for you or it's a witness against you. But nonetheless, it's a witness. So it's by the means of this preaching of the gospel uh, that um, will result um, in taking out this creation. Because it's by the completion of the body of Yahshua the Messiah, by the gospel. And once that is all said and done, or that body is complete, meaning that last sheep or that last member is added to the body, then we all can go home. But now, it's this gospel of the kingdom. So now get, get John 17 and 3 for me. And then we're going to get uh, 1 Corinthians 15. All right, this is uh, John 17. And three, and this is life eternal that they might know thee, the only true L. Now, can you read a verse above? I apologize <laughs> to get a little thought. Thank you. Um, you want me to start at one then, and I can, um, yeah, just go ahead. Sorry, <laughs> these words spake Yahshua and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father. The hour is come. Glorify thy son, that thy son also might glorify thee. So now, now Yahshua is pre. Now Yahshua is in the Garden of Gethsemane, and he's praying unto the Father. Now he's in a garden, and he's saying, "Read that over again." Sure. Father, the hour is come. Glorify the hour is. Glorify thy son. Read. That thy son also may glorify thee. Right, read on. As thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So the son, Yahshua, has been given power over all flesh. Now he said he had eternal life. Read that last part again. Sure. That he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So, he, Yahshua is giving eternal life to those that the Father has given him. You see? So now, he's going to get into what is life eternal. Read on. And this is life eternal. That they now, might... this is life eternal. That they, who is they? Israel might know what? He. The only true El and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. To know the only true El and Yahshua the Messiah, whom thou hast sent. Now, what we preach is the gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. So now him that believes shall be saved, and him that believes shall be damned. But nonetheless, it's a witness. So now that we have established what eternal life is, is to know. Let's get into exactly what we are to know. Get 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, please. It's just 1 Corinthians 15 and 1. Yes. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, mm -hmm. which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein you stand. So see, Paul, in this letter to Corinth, he's telling him that he delivered unto them what he first received. All right. Now he's saying he, they received it and they stand in it. Read. By which also ye are saved. You're a saved. Read. If you keep in memory what I have preached unto you. All right. Unless you have believed in vain. So now see, look. If it's not in vain, then Yahshua the Messiah is going to bring back to your remembrance that what he taught you. Because we have to, as he said, it's receive. To receive means to accept. You have to accept it. And then you stand in it, and then you, you keep in memory, unless you believe in the vain. But let's continue on. I, I don't have a lot of time. Sorry. Okay. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received. 
-hmm. how that the Messiah died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So now Yahshua the Messiah is how he died, buried, and resurrected according to the scriptures. Now I want you to go back to John 5 and 39 because Yahshua uh, talking to the uh, scribes and the Pharisees uh, told them that they searched the scriptures for in them they thought they had eternal life but they the scriptures were talking about him and in fact go to Isaiah 8 and 20 then go to uh, um, John 5 and 39 so we can find out uh, or break down what the scriptures are go ahead this is Isaiah 8 and 20, to the law and to the testimony. Now to the law and to the testimony. Well, what is that? Now the law is the first five books of your Bible, beginning with Genesis and ending in Deuteronomy. For those who have been here, you know this is a refreshment or rehearsal in your mind. Now the prophets, which is the next 34 books, those are the testimonies or the various patriarchs of what thus saith Yahweh, whom he had them to write uh, of of the visions and the experiences that they had during that time, like Jeremiah, Isaiah, Ezekiel, and in their name uh, possesses a characteristic with Jeremiah or Ezekiel. You have the El and uh, and it's showing uh, uh, that is Yahweh's story, or it is His story, which is Yahshua the Messiah. So now those books together make up a volume. Now, Yahshua the Messiah said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book. It is written of me to do thy will. So you have the law and the prophets, all right? Uh, just like the two breasts, um, where that baby, it wings, you see, it is, 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 uh, when it comes through the womb, it feeds on the left breast, and then it switches and feeds on the right. Why? So that that milk can fill up in that breast that was drained, you see? And what we are being filled in is the knowledge and the wisdom of Yahshua the Messiah. His spirit, this is not a, this is a, spiritually and psychologically uh, speaking, his spirit in us, quickening our souls or quickening our attributes, just as those vessels in the uh, tabernacle had to be anointed. And then that cloud filled that tabernacle, you see. And then what? It was ready for the service and use. So now Yahshua the Messiah is through the means of the preaching of the gospel. That's what we want to bring out. Is that the, the death, burial, and resurrection. Not just to say it, but to show how and prove it by going to the law and the prophets. And how it was talking about or how Yahshua instituted, he set it up prophesied about him to come, come in, fulfill it. You see, fulfill what? Fulfill those 600,000 years of people's places and things. Those 600 uh, are those, yeah, 613 laws and, and commandments. And uh, to take away that sin that was inherited on down from Adam. Now, Yahshua the Messiah had accomplished something that no man could have ever done in their existence. In fact, it said all the books in the world can contain what he had done. So now in learning these things and being reminded that we have to go to the law, which is the first five books, and the prophets, which is the 34 books, this has become so simple and familiar with us. We don't realize that the world is ignorant of these things. It's by revelation that we understand it. So now, uh, go ahead, get um, uh, John 5 and 39. Okay, this is John 5, John 5 and 39. Mm -hmm. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. Mm-hmm. And ye will not come unto me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men. But I know you that you have not the love of Elohim in you. I am come in my father's name and ye receive me not. 
if another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. So now when we're brought and introduced into this school, now you hear what Yahshua said unto the scribes and Pharisees. He said, I come in my father's name. And he told them, you receive me not. Now if another come in his own name, him ye shall receive. Now, if you fast forward up to today, many thousands, millions, billions of souls of men have come in the name of Jesus Christ. They don't know where that name originated, who created the name, no investigation of the origin of that name. That name is a conglomeration of three different deities. You have a Babylonian, a Greek, and you have a Hindu. You got the, the J-E, which is Babylonian, the S-U-S, -S, which is from Greek, and then you have the Christ or Krishna, which is Hindu, and this is a bastardation, or this is a, a erroneous name, a, a substitution, or what they say, a translation of the true and original name, Yahshua. So now Yahshua comes in his father's name. Now get Exodus 3 and 13, and let's pick up with Moses, where he first received the name, the first man to receive the name. And let's see what Yahweh reveals about his name. Um Go ahead and pick up Exodus 3 and 13. This is Exodus 3 and 13. And Moses said unto Yahweh, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers have sent me unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? So now the man Moses being going through a, a death decree, buried in the ark and resurrected, and then going through another death, killing an Egyptian, burying him in the sand, and then resurrecting into the uh, wilderness, uh, fleeing, and then being up there for some 40 years, after 40 years in Egypt, so that's 80, Yahweh appears unto him in a vision. This is some time after uh, uh, Moses had uh, um, uh, been had sons in this wilderness and tending his father-in-law's sheep, and one day on the backside of a mountain, Yahweh appears unto him in a vision, a bush on fire not being consumed. There Yahweh revealed his name. He revealed his, gave Moses signs and witnesses and told him to go down into the land of Egypt. Even through all Moses' excuses, Yahweh eliminated and told him that he will put his words or be with his mouth, you see, and tell them, uh, tell uh, unto Pharaoh, let his people go. So now in doing, in this being said, Moses asks an intelligent question. Well, what shall I say unto them? You see, when I go into the land of Egypt, the Elohim, now in the King James Version, they'll say God. When if God is his name, it will be a foolish question and an unlearned for Moses to be asking God what God's name is. But see, God we find as a title. And it's uh, Elohim, which is plural. Elohim means almighty. That's the title that Yahweh, Father, gave unto himself. Now, here Yahweh's about to reveal his name. So keep reading. 14. And Yahweh said unto Moses, I, I, Asha, Aya, I will be what I will to be. Now, he says, I will be what I will to be. Aya, Asha, Aya. That's Hebrew. Now, it means I will be what I will to be. Now, Yahweh manifested that unto uh, uh, Moses with the casting down of the rod and picking it up and then the putting the hand in his bosom and then plugging it out and being lepers and putting it back in and then plugging it out and it be as other flesh and then taking the water, pouring it on the ground and turning it into blood. He gave them witnesses. He gave them proof. Now, look at this beauty. Look, look at this. Moses, who was a, uh, a, a stutterer, like what I just did, had a speech impediment. And then, <laughs> and then Aaron, who spoke well, Yahweh or Yahoshua, which is Yahweh will be salvation, was in the land of Egypt, called or sent him out of the land of Egypt to meet his brother. Now, Aaron spoke well. So now you have 
Moses, who Yahweh putting his words in Moses' mouth. Now, Moses is telling Aaron what to say unto the people. Now, Moses in type, since he's a stutterer and repeats himself, he is likened unto the law. Now, Aaron, who got the words drawn from Moses, just as the prophets is drawn from the law, spoke to the people. Now, the prophets was prophesying to the people of who to come, which was Yahshua. You see, he was back there in Egypt as Yahoshua, Yahweh will be salvation. He's setting it up. And then he comes on in and he's fulfilling it. If anyone can do it right, it's him. Now he's coming in as salvation or Yahshua is salvation. So here you got Moses, like it, like it unto the law, Aaron, like it unto the prophets. Now we just said, if they speak not according to this word, well, what appeared unto them in the midst of that bush? It was what? The angel or what? The word or son. Now I said there was no light in them. Now, you know, Moses had, the, now, you know, Moses, <laughs> you know, that pillar of fire was a light unto Moses and to the children of Israel through that, that, uh, 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 Red Sea. Even before that, they was in that, what, land of Goshen, of what? Light. You see, even through the three days of stinging and darkness, there was what? There was light down there. What is that trying to show you? Yahshua is the light in you. You are in ethereal or spiritual darkness. And uh, you, spiritually and psychologically, that land of Goshen, walking down here in this land called Egypt or the world for, for this matter. So now just as the law and the prophets, you see, coming down into the land of Egypt, telling the Egyptians who knew not Yahweh. Now we said eternal life is to know. So now here the Yahweh revealed his name or made known unto Moses his name and witnesses and told him to go unto Pharaoh. Now this is a Pharaoh of the 16th dynasty. I mean, 18th dynasty. Now this is the Ramses the second. Now 18 is what? 666. Now, that was manifesting Satan. Now, Pharaoh's uh, taskmasters or his host represents Satan's host, which is those cast out or demonic demons. They've been demoted, so they're called demons. Those angels that were once in heaven or lost their uh, first estate. So now them being manifested on incarnating Satan, Satan and his host. What that's showing is the sim uh, symbolism of Israel being in bondage to uh, Satan, like an or Pharaoh, like unto a soul being captive or in bondage to Satan. Now, just as Moses had came unto Israel with the name or the law and the prophets and the witnesses, see, like unto a soul who's being what? It says, oh, where's that scripture? Get that scripture for me where it talks about uh, unless, um, how can someone uh, hear unless a preacher be sent? Um, if you know where that's at. Okay. Um, Roman 10 and 15. Well, did you want me to start up a little bit? Please. Okay. okay, this is Romans 10 and 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not heard? No, excuse me. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace. So now Moses was sent to preach or to tell the children of Israel of who? Of Yahshua and show them the signs and witness. And he said, if they don't believe the what? The the uh, uh the first two signs they'll believe the what the latter sign you see so that they might believe what that I am Yahweh that is an experience that they're having 
just like in unto the soul that is brought into this teaching or a preacher has been sent unto that soul preaching what the gospel of Yahshua, the Messiah, which is his death, burial, resurrection by the law and the prophets, you see, according or or by the scriptures, according to the scriptures, you see, and uh, uh, that soul being, oh, my goodness, <laughs> that soul being introduced just as Israel was introduced to what know that 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 he is Yahweh we all been introduced to this teaching by Yahweh in a body that's who talked that's who what hey uh come down to you know whatever location you're at Yahshua was the one who introduced himself to us come on now so now we've been introduced so now here's Moses not to get off but here's Moses and Aaron coming down into the land of Egypt, right? He's delivering unto them the name. So now Moses asks this intelligent question. He says, what is your name? Uh, Yahweh says, Ea, Asher, Ea. Now he says, I will be what I will to be. So now that's what Yahshua said, coming in his father's name. Now Yahweh, who is, uh, Ea, uh, uh, which is characterized by Ea, Asher, Ea, I will be what I will to be. His name means he who exists and causes to exist. Now, when you break Yah, but when you separate Yah and Way, um, in fact, I say I put it like this: the tetragrammaton means four-letter word is the uh, characteristics or a Hebrew name for what they say the God of Israel or Yahweh, which is Y H W H. Now, to transliterate it, which means taking letter for letter, word for word, into our English language, is uh, uh, Hebrews, which reads uh, uh, right to left. You see, we read left to right. They read with consonants and they would mentally or orally insert or support the vowels where needed. So now to transliterate YHWH of the Tetragrammaton in our language, we inserted the vowels A and E, the A between the YH and the E between the WH. Now, when you insert the A between the YH, it pronounces Yah. Now, Yah denotes masculine. Now, when you put the E between the WH, it pronounces Way. Way denotes feminine. Now, to to show a witness on that, you take the first man that was created. Now here, this man born on the sixth day. Now, this was shown to Moses in his vision atop of Mount Sinai on the second and on the third trip. Now, um, he sees the man being created on the sixth day, formed from the dust of the ground, likened unto that uh, unto spirit. Yahweh breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and he became a living soul. So now yeah, man is made body, soul, and spirit. So now within the man was the woman. Her name, or before, I'm sorry, the transgression, their name was Adam. Can we get that in Genesis? Um, where is that? Is that Genesis 5 and 3? I believe that was um No, it's not Genesis five and three. Genesis and it's it's actually um No, it is Genesis five and two. Okay. This is Genesis five and two. Male and female created he them and blessed them and called their name Adam and now he called their name Adam. So now at the time when the man being placed in the garden in the breath of life entering into him and him becoming the living soul, the woman was in the man. And what Yahweh did was cause a deep sleep upon the man and perform the first surgery by taking a rib from the side of the man in the womb and creating the womb man. Now, the reason why Yahweh did not create the man, the woman, like she, like he did the man, was to manifest himself and being the woman in the man. The man is both masculine and feminine within himself because Yahweh 
is both masculine and feminine within himself. So he is or he can produce or reproduce life within himself. He doesn't need a cold eternal or a goddess to create life, but his name means that which causes or to be or to exist and manifest in Eya Asher Eya. He will be who he wills to be. He will be how, he will be where, he will be when, he will be why. You can't begin to comprehend the power of Yahweh. So now, man, the woman taken out of the man. Now he's in a death-like state. He's buried or immersed in that in that sleep. And the woman is taken out. You see, there's your double operation. He's buried in that state. The woman is taken out or being regenerated or being brought forth. So now uh, when the man resurrects, he sees the woman presented before him, like unto Yahshua and the Messiah. When he died on the cross, he was what? Buried in Joseph's new tomb. But what also happened? It was a regeneration. The preaching of the gospel was taking place into the captive down there. And then what happened? He resurrected first. And then the woman, Israel, like it unto Eve, being presented before the man, Yahweh, or like it unto Adam. So now Adam resurrects out of this state and sees the woman presented before him. And Yahweh puts in Adam or directs him to say, now therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife. Now the question should you, you should ask is, now if Adam didn't have a physical mother and father, what are you talking about? Well, Yahweh was his father. Now he came from what? The mother earth which was that showing his mother. Now he said he shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be what? One flesh. Now from a physical standpoint, it's utterly impossible to be or to fuse together, to be bone of bone and flesh and flesh. What that is showing you is through Yahshua's death, burial, resurrection and outpouring of the Holy Spirit, preaching the gospel on the day of Pentecost. Now the woman is clothed in the sun or she has been placed back in the man. And now he and she are spiritually bone of bone and of flesh of flesh. And they are now as one. They see as one. They think as one. They be as one. They move as one. They operate. All, all you have become translated or been made a member of the body of Yahshua the Messiah. And all your members of your physical body, I'm talking, you. Romans 1, 19 and 20, that which may be known. You, your physical body works as one, don't it? You don't rise with your feet, you rise with your head. Why? Because Yahshua the Messiah is the head of the assembly. You see, or he is the head of the household. You see, he's the head. And we, Israel, or the woman, are the bride, you see. And now, it, it's, um, I feel like I'm all over the place. Um, but um, Karen, at the I just wanted to let you know that five minutes sign showed about three minutes ago. Just let you thank know. you. No, thank you. I, I I was actually wrapping up. Um, no problem. Just want to let you know. <laughs> um, but it's just a little bit, a little, a few. You know, it's just he 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 made the man on the sixth day. Now, you know, he came in his father's name. He's the true Adam, the second Adam. His name is Yahshua. She would mean salvation. That's Yahweh taking on a shape and form, manifesting in a physical body to redeem mankind back unto himself. And it's by the preaching of the gospel, believing what he already done. You know, he's already, the, the battle's already won. It's a fixed fight. You see, it's become conscience now. But to, un to understand where you are now, you have to go back to the beginning to see how it was set up. So you can thoroughly understand. I have a profound knowledge, but um, if anything was gained or said, all praise and knowledge go. Uh, <laughs> all praise and and uh, acknowledgement, or all praise and honor, goes unto Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah.
ਕੀ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਕੇਸੀ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਸਪੀਕਰ ਆਨ ਫਰ ਦੀ ਕਾਲ ਆਨ ਟਾਟਿਕ ਕੇਸੀ ਜੌਨਸ ਸਟਾਰਟ ਜੌਨਸ ਹੈਲੋ ਕੈਨ ਯੂ ਹੀਅਰ ਮੀ ਯੈਸ ਹਾਲ ਰਾਈਟ ਅ ਵੈਲ like to give our honor to Yahweh Elohim through his son Yahshua the Messiah anything is gain all praise goes to him um I enjoyed the comments from the previous speakers um I'm just grateful to have another opportunity um to learn something I'm so sorry about that It's so, all right just grateful to, to have another day to learn something um and Yahshua is worthy of, of all the praise and I'm just grateful just to uh share anything that he's revealed unto me and uh you know this school was result of a divine vision given to the founder and these pic- pictorial um charts that you see here testifies of one person which is Yahshua the Messiah and that's his death his burial and his resurrection and these charts are set up threefold like in unto that tabernacle pattern which Moses and Israel pitched in the wilderness uh the upper portion of the plate is likened unto the most holy place and the middle portion of the plate is likened to the holy place and the uh final plate the third plate on the bottom is likened to the outer court and it's through these pictorial illustrations that we begin to learn how Yahweh Elohim operates and is through a a pattern he is a pattern maybe we can have a Deuteronomy 6 and 4 as the previous speakers were saying that we've been admonished to go to the law and the prophets so maybe we can have um uh, Deuteronomy 6 and 4 and um Zechariah 14 and 9 and 1 John 5 and 7 This is Deuteronomy 6 and 4 Hear O Israel Yahweh our Elohim is one Yahweh or unity Okay, and this is Zechariah 14 and 9. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth, and in that day shall there be one Yahweh and his name one. And this is 1 John 5 and 7. For there are three that bear record in heaven. the father the word and the holy spirit and these three are one and there are three that bear record i'm, I'm sorry and there are three that bear witness in earth the spirit and the water and the blood and these three agree in one yes yeah thank you um and see when this plate the adam coming out the garden He, he comes down in condemnation as the sun in the sky is going down and Adam's conscious he's falling in his conscious and maybe I can have um Adam testifies a Yahshua the Messiah so maybe I can have um uh 1 Corinthians 15 and and 
but Adam it plays a type of a degenerator. Um, Lucifer was cast into the garden uh, and he deceived the whole world. And he, maybe we, we should have, uh, he deceived the woman Eve. They were not supposed to eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Um, and they were told, in the day that you touch, you shall surely die. And they were driven out, out of that garden, out of that peaceful state that they were in. And and uh, driven, and they were in condemnation. Maybe we could have a uh, go back to Genesis. I do want to go back to Genesis, maybe the third chapter. And see that sun going down in the sky shows a degeneration. And Yahshua, through his resurrection, the sun rise. So it, it showed it's his, through his resurrection, that was a regeneration. All of mankind from Adam on to Moses were dead. Maybe we can also have a. First Corinthians, no, not not First Corinthians. I want to say Romans five and twelve, and you can go to uh, twenty. Um, but as the previous speakers were saying, uh, Yahshua is the teacher. Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation, and see. It's on, he's the deliverer. He he is the revealer of secrets. Maybe we could have John also John or yeah, John 14 and 26. Yeah, you can. Okay, first Corinthians 15. Yes, ma'am. First Corinthians 15 and 45. And so it is written. The first man, Adam, was made a living soul, and the sec and the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Howbeit that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterwards that which is spiritual. The first man is of the earth earthy, the second man, Yahweh, is from heaven. Continue. That's, that's okay. Okay. Did you want to continue or that's it? Um, what uh, else did I call for? You were quoting Rom uh, Romans 5 and 12. And then you wanted to go back to Genesis? Yeah, about that. That them falling in their conscience because they were deceived by Lucifer and um, they were cast out of that garden and they they would they would, would Adam would have to um, toil the ground and Adam means red you know and And he's, as the previous speakers was was saying, um, is he's testifying to Yahshua. So can I have Romans five and twelve? Not Romans, yeah, yeah. Wait, you, you want um, Romans five and twelve? All right, this is Romans five and in five and twelve. Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world. And death by sin, and so death passed upon all men, but that all have sinned. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over them that had not sinned, after the similitude of Adam's transgression, who is the figure of him that was to come. That's 
try. And that's right. And, um, you know, we also have um, Noah and Noah being given that vision that uh, that the, there will be a flood or it will be rain that will be coming from above warn the people and was told to make an ark for the saving of his family. Um, and they made an ark and that ark was threefold. Uh, and it testified and they and the animals and Noah and his wife and his sons and their wives, eight souls and all, all went into that ark. And it was made threefold, and that ark testifies to Yahshua the Messiah because it was a safety for them from the destruction that was going, that, that came, came forth. And so maybe we can get Genesis 6 and 15. Okay, and Dr. Jones, did you still want John 14, 26 first or go to Genesis? Uh, yeah, you can get John 14 and 26. Okay, this is John 14 and 26. <clears throat> but the Comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Yes, yes. And, and he said, the Father... He's going to come in his father's name. Now, the father is going to teach you all things. And Yahshua means Yahweh is salvation. And it's the father who's revealing these secrets. Um, so. Also, can. Uh, I don't really. I don't have. Um. And that art is typifies, you know, the, can we get that Genesis? Because that art was buried in the floods of that water. And that art resurrected above the mountaintops. And that's also testifying to Yahshua, the Messiah, because he went through a death, a burial, and a resurrection. So can we have that Genesis 6 and 15? Okay, this is Genesis 6 and 15. Okay, Genesis 6, 15, getting that. <clears throat> All right, sorry. Genesis 6, 15. Um, and this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. Do you want me to go up? Uh, 6 and 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Room shall thy make in the ark, and shall pitch it within and without with pitch. And this is the fashion which thou shalt make of it. The length of the ark shall be 300 cubits, the breadth of it 50 cubits, and the height of it 30 cubits. A window shalt thou make to the ark, and in a cubit shalt thou finish it above. And the door of the ark shalt thou set in the side thereof, with lower, second, and third story shalt thou make it. Yes. Yes, and that ark allowed Noah and his family to be saved and come into the next age. You no. Know, um, that was the only safety. And it's the same thing today. Um, 
being in Yahshua the Messiah, you know, that ark is, uh, if you see it pictorially, it's in the holy place, you know. Um, and, you know, it, it's just, we really are just surrounded with a great cloud of witnesses. The promise was made to Abraham that in his seed, he would bless all families of the earth, uh, both Jew and Gentile. So that's black and white, and it will only be blessed through Yahshua the Messiah, through him going through a death, a burial, and a resurrection, and ascension, and him pouring out his spirit on the day of Pentecost. First to the Jew, and seven years later to the Gentiles. And maybe we could have a... Uh, uh, Genesis 15 and 12. This is Genesis. Or, continue. Sorry. This is Genesis 15 and 12. And when they and when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Avon, and lo, a horror of great darkness fell upon him. And he said unto Abel, Know of surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. And also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. Yes. And that came to pass. Uh, Moses was reared up um, under a death decree. Uh, children of Israel were placed under heavy bondage by Ramsey, uh, um, of the 18th dynasty, who represented Lucifer. And they were in heavy bondage. And Moses is reared up and born under a death decree. And his mother hid him for some three months. And when she can no longer hide him, she made a ark of bulrushes and placed it by the river's brink. And Pharaoh's uh, daughter came down to bathe herself at the river and her uh, and seen the ark and opened up the ark and maybe we can have Exodus 1 and 9. Okay, this is Exodus 1 and 9. And he said, well, can we start at 8? Exodus yeah, 1 and 8. And there rose up a new king over Egypt, which knew not Joseph. And he said unto his people, Behold, the people of the children of Israel are many and mightier than we. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply, and it come to pass that when there falleth out any war, they join also with our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. And do you want me to kind of jump down where the death decree went out? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And the king of Egypt spake unto the Hebrew, I'm sorry, 1 and 15. And the king of Egypt spake to the Hebrew midwives, of which name of one was Shipra, and the other was Pua. And he said, uh, and he said, when ye de, excuse me, when ye do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stool. If it be a son, then thou shalt kill him. And if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwife feared Yahweh and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. And, and, the, midna and the midwives said unto Pharaoh, because the Hebrew women are not as the Egyptian women, 
for they are lively. And delivered ere the midwives came unto them. Do you want to chop down about Moses being hidden? Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay, this is Exodus 2 and 1. And there went out a man of the house of Levi and took to wife the daughter of the Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not hide him any longer, hide him, hide, but not longer hide him, she took him for, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and daubed it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off, to which what would be done of him. Fifth verse. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maid walked along the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maids to fetch it. And uh, dropping down, seventh verse. Then his sister then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go to call a, a nurse? Call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women so they would nurse the child. And Pharaoh's daughter said, go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. Uh, do you want me to come yes. drop down where he slew a man or is that? Not, well, I mean, yeah, we, we definitely uh, now Moses is yeah you can if you can okay. find that I appreciate it's, that uh, Exodus 2 and 11 and it came to pass in these days when Moses was grown and he went unto his brethren and looked on their burdens and he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew one of his brother and he looked this way and that way and when he saw that there was none no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. And he said unto them, he said unto him that did the wrong, wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said, who made thee a prince and judge over us? Intended thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? and Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a principle of a death because he killed the Egyptian and buried him in the sand. And he knows this thing is known. So he's getting ready to flee. Maybe we can continue on in the scripture. Okay, and so just try to cut it up a little bit and get... get yes, ma'am. Okay, and so to Genesis 2.16. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came to draw water and fill the troughs to water their father's flock. And the shepherds came and drove them away. But Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flocks. That's when right. Heard, uh, oh. Okay. That's I the think. principle of a death, a burial, and a resurrection because he flees into the land of Midian and becomes a shepherd and marries one of the daughters of Jethro Ruel. And he sits down on a well, which also testifies of Yahshua the Messiah. Maybe we can find. Um, I want to say that uh, it's in John, I believe, the 10th chapter. Uh, but nevertheless, he begins to uh, become a shepherd. And Yahshua speaks of sheep hearing his voice. Maybe we can find that. John 4. Yeah. Oh, that's the woman at the well. It's, it's in John, the 10th chapter. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'll start. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. I'll start. In... 
I'll start at, I'll just, I'll start at once. <laughs> verily, verily, I say unto you, he that enter, entereth not by the door into the shepherd, but climbeth up some other way, the same as a thief and a robber. But he that entereth in by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the parter openeth, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. And a stranger will they not follow, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of strangers. Yes, and that's testifying to Yahshua the Messiah. But Moses is a shepherd, and he comes upon a burning bush, uh, having a vision of a burning bush, and it's an angel in that bush, and the bush is not being consumed. And Moses is given an introduction. So uh, can we have, a, I want to say, the, 3 and 12, Exodus 3 and 12. Okay, this is Exodus 3 and 12. Uh, maybe we'll start at 3 and 11. <laughs> and Moses okay. said unto Elohim, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee when thou bringest has brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve Elohim upon this mountain. And Moses said unto Elohim, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The Elohim of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And Elohim said unto Moses, Aya Asher Aya. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I will be have sent me unto you. And Elohim said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, the Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac, and the Elohim of Jacob have sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Yes. Um, thank you. Uh, and he also had to give Moses some signs, um, you know, putting his hand in his bosom and then becoming leprous and putting his hand back in there and it became as his other flesh and casting a rod on the ground and it turning into a serpent and him picking it up by the tail and it turning back into a rod again. So he had to give Moses some confidence to go back down into Egypt to, to deliver the children of Israel and Simultaneously, during this time, as, as 10 devastating plagues being poured out on the Egyptians. And these plagues were poured out on all of the deities that they were serving. Like uh, this, it was stingy black darkness uh, from one of those days. And the water turned into blood. It was a, a plague of lice, a plague of frogs. So Egypt was totally devastated. And there's a, a man by the name of Joshua, correctly Yahshua, um, who is down there uh, with the children of Israel. He's, but he, his parents are not uh, among the children of Israel. He's the son of Nun. So during this, these plagues, Yahweh had Moses. Moses uh, was a stutter. He had his brother Aaron meet him to come back down into Egypt to uh, deliver the children of Israel. 
that Aaron represents the prophets and Moses is a type. He's a type of the lawgiver. So you had a law and the prophets going down into Egypt and delivering a message uh, to Pharaoh. Uh, to deliver the name of Yahweh to Pharaoh. And so uh, it, on the 10th and final play, which was the death of the firstborn um, male and beast, um, all firstborn males and in, in, in the household uh, were killed. And the children of Israel were uh, were instituted the Passover, and they were told to take out a lamb. So maybe we can um, have Exodus to twelfth chapter read, because um, this was the only way. E Egypt on the bottom of the chart represents ignorance and ignorance of your Creator. It, um. Okay, I see the five minutes sign. Thank you. This is Exodus twelve and one. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, "This month shall be unto you the beginning of month. It shall be the first month of the year to you." Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day, they shall tenth day they, of this month, they shall take and to them. First month be in April. So we we're in that time now. Um so continue on. Okay. And the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man, according to his eating, shall make your count for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish. A male of the first year, you shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats, and you shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And they shall take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast with fire, his head and with his legs, and with the pertness thereof. And ye shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning ye shall burn with fire. And thus shall you eat it, with your loins skirted, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It is Yahweh's Passover. And thank you. And that lamb testified of Yahshua the Messiah. Um, the lamb of Yahweh did take away the sins of the world. Uh, he, was, he had a crown of thorns placed on his head to nails in his hands, nails in his feet, and placed on the cross, making a four-point configuration. And uh, Pontius Pilate, when they took him before Pontius Pilate, Pontius Pilate said, I find no fault, and I find no guile with, the, with this man. Um, and it, would ha it couldn't have any bone, bones broken. Um, see, Yahshua said he came to fulfill. So I want, I want Matthew five seventeen, and then I want John nineteen and uh, thirty through thirty four. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
This is Matthew 5 and 17. Think not that I am come to destroy the law of the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law to all be fulfilled. Yes, that's right. Uh, can we have John 19 John. and 19 and 30 to 30. Yes, okay. This is John 19 and 30. <clears throat> when Yahshua therefore had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. Okay. Look like my time is complete. Uh, if anything was gained, all honor and praise goes to Yahweh Elohim through his son, Yahshua Messiah. I'm going to yield the floor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Jones. Well, this brings class to a conclusion. And I want to thank all those who visited with us tonight and study. We meet publicly at the Best Western Plus Hotel at 4400 Frontage Road, Hillside, Illinois, on Sundays from 12 to 2 p.m. Monday and Thursday nights on Zoom and YouTube from 7.30 to 9.30 p.m. Twice a month on Thursdays are in person from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m., which will be announced monthly. The next in-person meeting will be this Thursday. Will be this Thursday and also on Monday, April the 15th. We would like to thank everyone again for joining our class. Now, please let us bow our hearts and minds for doxology, which is taken from the last two verses from the book of Jude. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise Elohim, our savior, through Yahshua, the Messiah, our sovereign, belong glory and majesty dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let the class say hallelujah. 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 hallelujah.